We will be talking to Michigan State offensive line recruit Kevin Wingington. What's going on, Kev? Doing good. How are you? Well, I'm not dancing, man. That's for sure. <laughs> I mean, I you can call me Twinkle Toes if you want. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm I'm not much of an offensive lineman. I, I mean, I I know offensive linemen need to dance. They they a lot of them do mixed martial arts. A lot of people, a lot of them do ballet. I've heard so many different stories about, and I've interviewed a lot of offensive linemen over the years, and a lot of them tell me they do a lot of off off the field activities and a lot of them some do hot yoga i mean it's crazy so uh how are you and your family doing this pandemic oh we're doing good um i'm back in school i'm back starting my season so it's kind of almost feeling back to normal in a way but um happy we start football our games next weekend uh but everyone's been safe you know i've been lucky to not really know anyone that's caught the virus so it, it looks like you're just so excited that the season's about to start man so excited. You know, I, you're not putting any smiles on your face. I'm looking at you right now. We got to get you to smile. So we'll do a little bit of that as we move forward in this interview. But um, what is it like playing offensive line? I mean, we've, we've interviewed a lot of offensive linemen and we ask, you know, crazy questions as far as schemes are concerned, but being a big guy and being the guy that protects the quarterback. And, and a lot of people don't understand how important that position is as an offensive lineman. What is it like being that guy that has to stop that 360 pound behemoth who mm -hmm. can run through a line and try to get through that, that offensive line to get to that quarterback. What is it like to stop that, that big time defensive player? Yeah, no, I, I think offensive linemen is like one of the um, most uncommon, you know, positions and, uh, the way that you're not really praised every play, but you kind of only get looked down on if you mess up. Um, but no, I, I love being an offensive lineman. I played basketball my whole life. And then kind of when I got started in high school, I started playing offensive line and playing football and kind of just fell in love with it. So uh, you're, you're according to 24 um, seven rivals.com. You are listed at six, five and two ninety, um, which is again, still you're pretty a big, big boy. You're a it's big still boy. pretty big, but it's in terms of an NFL offensive lineman and what we've seen of these top college teams, it is on the smaller side, but again, we've also seen that be a trend with a lot more spread offenses and faster offenses. So do you think that kind of trend will continue? And have you been using those kinds of offenses so far? playing in high school football first of all speedy before he answers that he's got big feet okay big feet is all it, he doesn't have to be big in stature he just has to have big feet because you know what you have to do with those big feet you got to plant them in the ground and stop those big men so this i don't care good. i know you got big feet so it doesn't matter how tall you are go ahead mm -hmm. i'm sorry um no you know i am uh yeah six five two ninety but um especially in the high school level that's pretty big you know there's not really that much that many bigger guys than that but um, once I get to Michigan State, I know I'll probably get to about 6'5", 315, 320. Um, so then I'll be right there with, you know, everyone else. Um, but, you know, playing at 290, I used to be 325. Uh, but this quarantine, I kind of lost a lot of weight and just so I could move faster and, you know, be in a lot better shape for the, you know, the third quarter, fourth quarter, those long drives, make sure I'm still able to play at my peak performance. Well, Michigan State is is very well known for their basketball team. OK, and by the way, we are talking to Michigan State offensive line recruit Kevin Wigginton. Michigan is a very well known school for their basketball. They're really not known as as well for their football. And there is a team over there in Michigan that the Michigan State you know, Spartans don't like. And that's the Wolverines. Mm -hmm. uh, when you decided to go to Michigan State, was there any thoughts about playing for Michigan State because you wanted to play the Wolverines? No, I, I honestly don't really care much about the Wolverines. Um, but uh, I, I do think a lot – I'm very excited to be a part of that rivalry. I don't think there's many rivalries bigger than Michigan State versus Michigan. Um, you know, just getting to play them every year and just seeing how the state kind of – it's almost, you know, split in half. You have Michigan State fans and then you got Michigan fans. But, uh, you know, I've definitely felt, you know uh, – I've seen the rivalry on Twitter. It's been fun to see and be a part of. Um, but yeah, there's been there's been a great tradition between that rivalry. So I'm excited to be a part of it. So the Big Ten this season is going with a very unique scheduling setup. Uh, it seemed like they weren't going to play for a while. Then all of a sudden they just filed a eight game season with a double conference tournament uh, with the second place teams getting to play as well. Do you like this setup? I mean, obviously you're not playing this year, but do you like this setup if it if they do go forward with it as a long term thing uh, for the for the conference? Um, well, I, I do like the schedule setup, but um, I think you definitely need to be playing uh, 
you know, a couple of non-conference games in the beginning because they'll play like Eastern Michigan, Western Michigan, kind of those warm-up games for the Big, Big Ten conference play. Um, you know, I, I know I heard you guys talk about the NFL, but there's, there's a lot of injuries going on right now, and that's because they eliminated the preseason. So you kind of get rid of that live contact before you get in those big games. But um, I hope it's just a one-time thing. You know, I think Michigan State's going to do really well this year. Um, this new staff is definitely going to surprise some people um, around the Big Ten. Kev, I got some news for you. I mean, this came out four hours ago. Michigan State reports 30 athletes test positive for COVID-19. What do you think about that? I, I saw that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. trying to protect you, man. You're you're yeah. my new offensive lineman, so I'm trying to help you. I'm, I'm trying to protect you. You better wear that mask, man. You better yeah. get – when you go back to school, put that mask on and make sure you protect yourself, man, because, uh, I mean, this is the story. This is This is four hours ago, so – yeah, you gotta watch. You gotta watch your step now, man. As you guys know, we are talking to Michigan State offensive line recruit Kevin Wigginton. Now, Kev, uh, I look at the picture. I look at the big picture right now, and Michigan State is is a known school, known for. They're also they have a good football background as well. And what was it like? Um, getting recruited by Michigan State. Mel Tucker is a very well known coach. What did he say to you that really drew you to the school? of Michigan State University? Yeah, so um, I'll start off. I, I was initially, you know, um, the offensive line coach, Coach Cap. He, he was the first one to reach out to me. Um, and, you know, I got to build a great relationship with him. But um, really, you know, I got to spend a, the first time I talked with Coach Tucker. It was a Zoom call with him and my parents, and we got to talk for about an hour. Um, and, you know, he's a very personal guy, family guy. Um, you know, I, I could tell he, he – he definitely wanted me and, you know, I could tend he would be texting me, just, you know, checking in on me, checking on my family. Um, but yeah, I would say, you know, I've, you know, got to deal with a lot of head coaches to being recruited and he's by far been the best one I've gotten to deal with. And, you know, his background, 10 years in the NFL and playing with Sab uh, working with Saban, working with uh, just all these big name coaches and has, has a great NFL pedigree. So that's, that's something that every recruit's really looking just, for. Just, just so you know, Kev, everybody works with Sabian. Everybody <laughs> works with Sabian. He's been in college football forever. The man is a football junkie. So yes, I think I, I would say about seven of the top seven of the top schools in the country were at least under Sabian at one point in their careers. So and then there's whoever has Lane Kiffin. <laughs> no, absolutely. Lane Kiffin. Come on. <laughs> at least you're not at least you're not being coached by that guy. That guy's out of his mind. Even though he is a good coach. He did a good job at USC. Uh, no, uh, he did, I'm not saying he's a bad coach. I'm just saying he's, he's a good coach. A college coach, not an NFL coach. <laughs> well, yeah. Anyone who goes to the Raiders a lot of the times is not a good NFL oh, coach. Oh, stop that. John Gruden's doing a John good Gruden job. John Gruden is the one exception. All, All right. right. Last, Go ahead. Ask Kevin another In the last question. 30 years. So, Kevin, uh, just continuing with Mel Tucker. Uh, he came recently from Colorado. Uh, the Pac-12 is no more. More of a, as a spread offense, uh, pro or pro style offense kind of league. Now you're entering the Big Ten. Do you think he'll try to adopt a lot of those concepts into the Big Ten? And do you think it'll work against a lot tougher defenses than you see in the Pac-12? Um, you know, I think Michigan State's going to bring a um, almost like a multiple type thing. They're going to be able to, uh, you know, run out of the spread formation while also doing a pro style offense at the same time. Um, you know, their offense quarter Jay Johnson. He's been a uh, He's been around the block, if you want to say. He's been at UNC right before Colorado. And, um, you know, I've watched a lot of game film with him coaching, and, you know, I'm really excited. I think he's going to, you know, bring something different that a lot of teams in the Big Ten haven't seen just with how diverse he is and pretty much able to call any play in the playbook. Um, and especially with the roster Michigan State has, they definitely could do that now. We are talking to Michigan State offensive line recruit Kevin Wigginton. Now, Kevin, I, I had the opportunity to watch this behemoth uh, run at the combine, and that's Makai Beckham. And he's a New York Jet, and he's been one of the best offensive, really surprises, at least one surprise for the New York Jets. They have a good offensive lineman that they drafted in the first round at number 11, probably the best offensive lineman in the draft, it looks like. When you watch this kid run the ball, run, you th see him run the 40 in five seconds flat. And I heard he, he, a guy that's six foot eight, 365 pounds. I heard he ran into four eight at one point. When you look at the speed of the game and, and you see these type of behemoth guys at the offensive line do what they do. And he was a basketball player too, bud. So what were your, what are your thoughts to the position at the offensive line? 
Yeah, you know, just you bringing up basketball. Um, I think, you know, if you play basketball, that translates best to playing offensive line. Just the footwork you're using, especially if you're a big man, you know, using drop steps and all that. But, uh, no, I, I loved watching Makai Becton. Even when he was at Louisville before, you know, he had a lot of hype around him. You know, he's six eight guy. He's huge. And, um, you know, he's, he's another guy who's really good with his feet. Um, which is which is the biggest thing for offensive linemen because every offensive lineman's big. Everyone, all of them are good, all powerful, but it's the ones with the good technique and the good footwork which really sets them apart. So um, you know, he's one of the few players I watch to kind of take something and add to my game. So, do you think the different types of like spread offenses, uh, outside based offenses, have really done that for offensive linemen, made it where it's not really this brute strength position as much anymore. Not, not that Makai Becton isn't strong. He's very strong, but it, it's not as much in terms of those power guys. Do you think that'll continue to happen? And if so, do you think there'll be more guys that are able to play offensive linemen? Because offensive linemen is one of those positions, drafting wise, that is very hard to find. Yeah, um, I think the game's definitely changing for offensive linemen. Um, you know, Makai's an exception, but the the at least at the college level they're getting smaller so not everyone's 335 anymore preach it man preach it tell them yeah they're getting a little smaller so it's you know you're around that 310 which is really just so you can move faster and especially with the spread offense you know you're passing the ball 30 40 times a game you want to be able to you know take your pass sets and stay strong see kev i have your back man i have your back so I've been saying this over and over again. We need to preach. You don't, it's not about size. It's not about stature. It's about technique and athletic ability. I've said this over and over again. Uh, it, it, we have seen so many players over the years in different positions, even the small ones. Look at Julian Edelman. How, who would have thought that Julian Edelman at his size coming into the league, the NFL, as a quarterback would be a successful wide receiver in the league? The only person that probably would have thought that was Bill Belichick. And now you're looking at this guy. I wouldn't say he's a Hall of Famer, but a Hall of Famer, but he's arguably one of the greatest playoff wide receivers we have ever seen. So uh, we have seen smaller guys in smaller positions at stature become top end players at their position. So Speedy, eat that, buddy. <laughs> What do you say that? Well, Speedy, what are you going to say? About I said I, I was oh, rolling stop. with the trend. Oh, I'll tell you the trend. The trend's completely wrong because look at Russell Wilson right now. Look at Russell Wilson. The no, guy's like I five. said the trend was getting yeah, but, smaller. But it doesn't – no, you said the trend was getting bigger. It, no, I said I, – I, what was my first question? Uh, Offensive linemen are getting smaller. Do you expect the trend to continue mm, because uh, of the spread off? I lost that. I'm sorry, Kev. I, I'm, maybe I'm a little in my own little world, but uh, a lot of people think that the offensive linemen are getting bigger. I think they're getting smaller and better. And, and, and I think in the big picture of where I think the offensive line is, I, it's hard when you ask questions to an offensive lineman, Kev, because I, the offensive line, it all goes in sync with each other. At certain positions on the field, on the football field, you know that if you dominate that position, you stand out the most on that defense. You know what I mean? Yeah. So as the offensive line, sometimes you don't really see those offensive linemen as dominant as they are unless you really watch the tape because it, 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 you, ha you all have to be in sync. One dominant player can stop a great defensive line. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Yep. So I, I think a, a lot of these offensive line, these great offensive linemen are lost. You, you really don't get the chance to notice them in college football because you're so worried about trying to find the, be the next big pass rusher like Chase Young or somebody like that or the, the big time quarterback or the big time wide receiver. Nobody really notices the most important position, I think, in college football that really stands out is the offensive lineman. So I, I, I think uh, it's a hard position. I don't think people understand it the most.